business today. Thank you, Monica Nabionga, for that report. Now, speaking of renewable energies, there's a story about funding of renewable energies. 2,000 people from the commercial sector, civil society organizations, developing partners, and the energy sector gathered to discuss how to further the promotion of renewable energy for sustainable development. Now, a, a segment of the platform dedicated to exhibitions allowing both domestic and foreign actors to promote their goods and enhance their business-to-business -business interaction. Let's have the story. The term energy transition describes the movement occurring within the global energy sector from fossil-based energy production and consumption systems such as oil, natural gas, and coal to renewable energy sources such as wind and solar energy as well as lithium-ion batteries, among others. Energy transition, regardless of the abundance of energy resources, funding severely hinders rising economies. Most of our electricity is produced from renewable energy sources. With our development partners, we are looking at how best we deploy renewable energy technologies. Now, renewable energy technologies are clean energy sources. These include hydropower, solar power, geothermal. Uh, we also look at now green hydrogen. Basically, we break down water into its components, hydrogen, and then put away the oxygen, and then you have green hydrogen that you can use for many aspects, including what we call as a reducing agent for the iron and ore industry. So renewable energies will play a key role for the future of our energy security. Uh, today, as a Representatives from various foreign missions trying to accelerate the energy transition participated in panel discussions. Norwegian envoy to Uganda claims that the country has set aside $1 billion for investment guarantees, which will significantly increase investment in the area and throughout Uganda. Be we are working on a facility that we will probably introduce in Sharm el Sheikh to mitigate the risk of climate-related investments in developing countries. Uh, our plan is to set aside uh, 1 billion US dollars for guarantees. Uh, if, uh, if private companies find it too risky and don't want to go into a market like, uh, like uh, Uganda, this facility could actually guarantee some of the investments if they go wrong. This would make it more or less risky for Norwegians, Norwegian firms to, to, to actually uh, engage here. And I, I think also the UK is working along those lines. So that Beyond assisting the business sector and Macquarie University in improving their capability for renewable energy, the Swedish embassy in Uganda plans to make Uganda the first sub-Saharan nation to have a floating solar system through a feasibility study energy it's important to have a holistic approach and to involve stakeholders at uh, at all levels and we are very pleased that we support programs that brings a variety of actors together including from the private sector and actors that share a common objective and to ensure that energy is used more efficiently and uh, maybe uh, uh, some of you may know that we also signed a memorandum of understanding with the government of Uganda for cooperation in the energy sector. And to just give you some examples, uh, we have had or we have several capacity building programs ongoing where staff in the energy sector are trained in renewable energy and energy efficiency. Uh, last week, actually, the SNV uh, launched a program called Inclusive markets for energy efficiency in Uganda and we committed uh, around 9 million US dollars in funding to this program uh, and it's in collaboration with Makerere University and the private sector foundation Uganda and our hope is uh, that these actors will bring their different expertise to the table earlier to a grant that we have signed uh, for a feasibility study on uh, floating solar plants uh, and if all goes well, the feasibility study is now uh, uh, on its way. Uh, Uganda would be the first country in sub-Saharan Africa to have floating uh, solar energy, and I think that's also very exciting. 
as the energy revolution has the potential to create jobs, the German embassy has trained experts such as solar energy technicians and engineers in this field and plans to invest in electric mobility, such as the most recent electric automobiles from Kira Motors. Uh, retrain technicians and uh, uh, people who have been working in um, other areas to, to train them as solar technicians, for instance, and also uh, creating jobs that are have, uh, are not on the market at the moment that that will be in demand so I think this potential is an extremely important. Another aspect is electric mobility. Uh, you have a company here in, um, in Uganda, Kira Motors, uh, which are uh, developing electric buses. I think that will go a long way. Uh, GIZ is supporting Bodawerk, a small German company. The European Union says most countries that have had to depend on fluctuating oil prices have had to deal with the consequences of energy scarcity. It's easy for me to talk about a just transition in, in the climate perspective as the potential here is so vast. It makes sense simply to develop these uh, resources, for instance uh, geothermal, to have a long-lasting energy at a locked-in price that can be advantageous and not being dependent for your state household on fluctuating oil prices. Then you can sell it on the market, but you are not dependent for your own energy household on this. And if One of the major obstacles for these investors is the risk associated with the nation's inadequate infrastructure, but the permanent secretary claims that the funds set aside for capital development have been effective. This capitalization company already has a running portfolio with quite some money on their books in terms of their asset value. So that fund is funding already. Through this World Bank project, we are just injecting additional funding. To it is a, it's about it's about 69 million US dollars. I would say between 60 to 70 million US dollars. We prioritize it through the different projects that we are undertaking. So if there's going to be an opportunity for investment, it will be a project we've packaged. We will go through the standard competing process and then a company that is interested and meets the criteria would then be able to invest in such a project. However, uh, through the Uganda Energy Credit Capitalization Company, uh, we have put aside credit funding that can be accessed through the private financial institutions and a number of energy service providers. So what? Uganda is endowed with renewable energy sources across the country and it's our responsibility to ensure their sustainable utilization. Rona Nahabwe, Smart24 TV, Business Today. Business Today will now take a short break, but we will return with proceedings from the COP27 and a new law to standardize the labor externalization. Please don't go away. Twenty-four.